Hi, my name is Todd Bigelow. I'm a freelance photographer based in Los Angeles for the last 30 years, working primarily with editorial, corporate, and nonprofit clients. I'm also an adjunct professor of photography and photojournalism, and a soon-to-be author on a book on freelance business practices. This is Two Minutes with Todd, a short video series where I address business practices for freelancers. Hope you enjoy. Hey everyone. So today we're gonna touch briefly on uh, a very mundane, <laughs> very boring topic that very few photographers really wanna talk about, including myself, and that's insurance. Uh, but this little video series is really based upon uh, providing information on things that we need as freelancers. And I'm here to tell you, you need insurance. I know many of you and many of my colleagues do try to go without insurance, but it is really um, just playing with fire. You're, you're going to end up regretting it when the time comes. And I do say when the time that comes, not if the time comes, um, that you need to file a claim or something happens to your equipment or to your business. So let's talk briefly about insurance and I'm going to break it down into two segments. So the insurance that I covered, that I, that I, that I have covers two uh, basic parts of my business. The first is it covers my equipment, okay? So that's kind of the commercial policy that I have. I list all my equipment by serial number and I place a value on that equipment, what I purchased it for, or what it what it you know came for as new, and um, that's going to be added up, and I'm going to get a premium based upon the amount of equipment that I want to insure. Now, remember to include all those little things that you think don't add up to money, like you know your your cards and 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 extra batteries and and your bags and stuff like that i mean we know that a good bag i'm i'm a big you know user of think tank bags and you know those are quality bags and i pay a you know good little price for them it's worth every penny but i want to insure them in case my bag gets stolen it's covered especially with all my gear in it but the bag is part of that as well okay so make sure you list everything Here's an important caveat for uh, your equipment insurance. Make sure your policy covers replacement value, not depreciated value. You want to be able to, if you have to file a claim, get the value of the newest camera that's equivalent on the market. So oftentimes, let's just say for instance, I still had a 5D Mark III that's several years old. Um, Canon is not making the 5D Mark III's anymore. So because I have replacement value for that, I will get the value of that camera um, that is equivalent to whatever their you know latest camera is or whatever camera is on the market at that professional level that is equivalent to that that's new. Okay, so the the co the the depreciated value of that 5D Mark III, I don't know what would it be worth, maybe a eight hundred, a thousand dollars. Um, but I can't go buy a new 5D Mark III if it's stolen. So that replacement value is going to provide the funds from the insurance company for me to go out and get a 5D Mark IV. And I'm assuming that Canon is still making those, which I do believe they are. Okay, so that's an important thing. You don't want it depreciate. You don't want coverage that, that provides for depreciated value coverage. You want replacement value coverage. Okay, second part of an insurance policy, very important. It's your liability policy, your general liability. It can be called other things, but this is a part of your, your uh, insurance policy that covers your business, okay? It covers, covers all sorts of things. It covers um, personal property of, of others, you know, up to a certain amount. So um, inside and outside a premise. So if you go on location and let's say I'm, bringing my gear into somebody's house and you know I bang it into a table or something and and I knock over a vase and it turns out that vase is worth you know $5000 or you know I destroy a piece of artwork god forbid or or I plug in my my lights and I overwhelm a system you know and I start a little electrical fire I cause some sort of damage okay my policy will cover that after I pay my deductible, which is like $500, okay? That's very, very important. It also provides for coverage for me against things like advertising injury and personal injury um, to others. So if my 
lights fall over and, and hit my assistant or hit the subject on the head, God forbid again, but I have coverage for that. You know, I would file a claim with my insurance company. If I do something where I end up being sued um, for any sort of trademark infringement or you know something along that lines, let's say an image that I inadvertently licensed had a logo on it and it's used commercially and I didn't get the rights to you know, a Nike logo or something and I get sued, I have coverage to protect against that for up to $1 million. That's pretty standard. A $2 million aggregate um, uh, for advertising and personal injury, uh, but 1 million per occurrence. Okay. And then I also have like stretch coverage as part of my policy, which, which is a very good policy offered by Hill and Usher. A lot of my colleagues have it. Um, that stretch policy has a lot of extra little bonuses to it. Um, things like it covers my computers worldwide. So when I'm traveling, if my computer is destroyed, not just for theft, but you know, if I if I accidentally drop it and really destroy it, I can file a claim um, with my insurance company and have it replaced. Okay. There's a lot of exclusions and a lot of things you got to pay attention to with insurance, but that's the basic two um, parts to an insurance. It covers your covers your equipment. And let me throw one more thing in about that. When you're renting equipment and you have business insurance, it covers your equipment. You can have your insurance company issue a certificate to the rental house showing that you're covered for rental insurance. Okay. What makes them the, what they call the lost payee. Okay, so when I rent insurance, my insurance company, or when I rent gear, my insurance company issues a certificate naming that uh, rental house as lost payee. What that means is I don't have to go in and place some large deposit for them to hold on a credit card when I'm renting uh, renting equipment. Okay, so that's that's really important, right? Because a lot of times we we rent a lot of gear, lenses, lights, and so forth, and that's tens of you know fifteen thousand dollars. So my insurance company, again, would issue a certificate directly to that house, send it straight over to that rental house. And that goes ahead and serves as, you know, um, a uh, insurance policy against anything that I do, you know, if that gets stolen or I destroy the equipment. Okay. So I want to make sure you understood that part. And of course, you know, the, the, the uh, liability part is extremely important um, that you, you, you have that coverage to protect your business. One last thing, this gets asked of me a couple of times a year, at least, particularly with, um, government or other large properties. If you go on to a, uh, the most recent thing that happened with me was, it was a County hospital and I had to go do a shoot there and I had to, uh, provide a certificate again, proving I have insurance before I can go onto that property. Okay. So they were not going to let me onto the property until I'm insured. And some would say that's very much like, you know, you hire somebody to come and cut your trees or a plumber or something like that. You want to make sure those people are bonded and insured in case, you know, they do something in it, even inadvertently and, you know, bust a pipe while they're on your property or something. Um, they'll fix it for you. And then they would probably file a claim with their insurance company to be in reimbursed for that. Okay. So that's how insurance works. Um, you know, if you're figuring out how to pay for these things, that's where I always push you back towards hold on to the rights to your work. This is where licensing can come in a few hundred dollars there here, a few hundred dollars there, you know, you just, you know, my insurance runs around seven or $800 a year for a really good solid policy. Um, and I easily, easily make that, uh, with, with licensing fees. So, you know, think about that, uh, make sure, um, that you do carry insurance as a freelancer. Okay. Hope that helps. And, um, I'll see you again next week.